guys and welcome back to HJW Gaming and a long-awaited season update. Apologies it's been so long since uh, I think the day one video was the last time I did an update on this server. Uh, I have had a lot of things going on with work, no excuses. I will, uh, I will try and keep you regularly informed going forwards. So into the game, I'll try and extensively cover kind of what's happened week on week um, between now, uh, well, between the start of the server and now. You see it's day 26, so we have had three and a half weeks into this server. If I just talk through season progress, you can see we've come quite a long way through this. Uh, we are actually on uh, season progress 10, which is control, which is any kingdom occupies three significant control points, which at the minute none do. It's only uh, two at the moment, and we do have only two others after that, which is uh, Dol Guldur opening up and becoming occupiable, and then of course five significant control points for uh, one ring to rule them all. So we are quite a long way through into this server at the minute, towards kind of the uh, the end game as such. So I'll show you the map as it is currently. Now my kingdom, uh, you will know, started in the uh, northeast in the Iron Hills. So we are the uh, this kind of light blue kingdom. We have Ferodwaith, uh, which is the dark purple kingdom, which is the kingdom of uh, Mine and Darm. Then we have uh, Kohag kingdom, which is green, which is Cogs and Legion. We have purple down at the bottom, and then we have red in the far corner. In fact, it might be better if I quickly just show you these on the fellowship rankings board so you see we are the light blues here which is home and burn then you have wolf and crow which form that kind of lilac purple darm and mine together form the dark purple you have ones who are the red kingdom in the bottom right uh, and then i think there was one other kingdom there which i think is dirt i believe actually hold a kingdom at the moment in this dark purple down here Yes, so there is another kingdom still floating around with, with dirt. So you can see that's what the map looks like at the moment. But it has been quite a lot of transition, particularly in the last, uh, well, probably seven days or so in particular. To begin with the season, you will, we will have left off around Iron Hills, of course, farming this area up here, which is where the majority of our production still lies. As you saw, we ended uh, day one, I think, uh, second on the production no top of the production board by quite a long way actually so yeah top of the production board we did continue taking large tiles at quite an extensive rate however when you start taking 200 230 power tiles that's when um kind of the the tactics i had fell off a little bit versus uh high spending players and we did end up finishing the awakened power event which was uh day after day seven uh in second place as we just couldn't quite keep up with uh, with those that could take you know high power tiles with very very little loss, we even tried uh, being a little bit sneaky and capturing um, capturing camps of level thirty five camps, which are as difficult as a two hundred power tile but offer three hundred and ten power. So we did try and take a couple of those. You see from our tiles, we do uh, we do have two of those in the minute with a Dale Watchman and a Bayorning camp. But at the time of uh, at the time of that day seven event, we did actually hold I think ten or fifteen of those, which was uh, trying kind of supplementing our power income, which of course we had to replace with resource tiles after day seven finished. But anyway, I digress. Uh, so looking at the movements on the map, so we did capture almost all of the territories around the Iron Hills. We still haven't picked up um, Erebor, of course. So Erebor would give us the. Uh, would, of course, complete that season progress, but we're in no rush to do it as we are busy elsewhere. Um, and then you'll see we made our capital in the Eastern Hills, reason being that uh, capitals, of course, don't have to be on the significant structures anymore, can be any structure you occupy. So we put it in Eastern Hills as it was the uh, the kind of furthest and safest keep we had, so we just moved it right out of the way so we don't have to worry about it much in future. Um, well, the first thing we did once we'd captured all of the easy keeps around this area was we pushed out of Iron Hills by capturing this pass here into East Bight and Central Mirkwood. The reason we did that is, of course, we wanted to try and we wanted to try and open up farming areas as soon as possible. So that was one of our first movements was to open up East Bight and move into that area and move towards the centre. 
Meanwhile, we did also move across East Bight to the north, and we also captured this pass here very early on into the woodland realm. So we had access to this top area as well, which, whilst it didn't contain large, large tiles like 260s and 300s, it does contain you know more large tiles for those that uh, want, want to continue farming, which... Uh, of course, we had lots of players. You can see we were top of the production board, and at the time of uh, at the time of taking that, we were the top two as well. So, tile hungry was uh, both fellowships were very tile hungry, so we needed to open up as much as possible. Similarly, at the same time, mine and Darm, this purple kingdom here, had pushed across and were looking to take this pass here, which they did eventually take, or it might have been the set, the lower one actually, they did take and started flowing into this top area as well, capturing along the way for Rodwaith, uh, Gundabad, and moving along towards uh, towards the Woodland Realm, which we then captured to uh, ensure we had kingdom protection. Withered Heath was also picked up by Mine and Darm at one point. So we had uh, we basically had a problem where we had an opponent which was expanding onto our doorstep. Both uh, both the uh, of our blue team, both Home and Burn, actually suffered a little bit where we struggled with our teams snapping out of that farming mentality and into battle mode. We did have quite low participation, so our opponents were able to really quickly progress across the map. One thing which our... Uh, our fellowship has always struggled with is in home is is the kind of tile war of blanket covering an area and then progressing that way which is what mine do incredibly well as well as darm and both of them progressed along this area and really started to encroach upon us which obviously made us worried with them in this northern area that is getting closer and closer to our capital eastern hills meanwhile we were fighting in upper anduin vale uh, and and really quite stalemated we had, we therefore had to kind of form a, a plan to try and, uh, and, and and get some progress, as it did stalemate for several days within that second week. So what happened was, once the uh, opponents took Withered Heath, they started to relocate into this area. There was a number of Purple Kingdom players who relocated into this area. So what Burn did was coming up through the bottom crossing, they actually captured a number of the crossings here. And what that did was that essentially severed links between b between two sides of the kingdom, basically. So those in Withered Heath were then trapped there and unable to support as Burn and Home together pushed towards Gundabad, which we, after a while, captured. As the opponents began to move in that direction to try and prevent us, basically, and try and free their colleagues trapped within Withered Heath, we went all in and pushed Upper Anduin Vale, which we successfully, as you can see, pushed through. You can see the number of forts I have and the fact that I'm still located in this uh, Upper Anduin Vale area. We then pushed through and managed to drive up north and capture Karok Keep. The next problem, of course, was making safe the eastern areas. So with two at this point they had two crossings captured, both of these, we needed to make safe this eastern area, as of course for as long as they had those crossings they could always re-enter and threaten, uh, threaten us. And the benefit of these passes is that the passes sit on our side. So if the opponent, we'd have fair warning the opponents were coming because they could capture the tunnel and then would have to capture the pass, so we would know. And also, if we're located around here, we'll have much shorter march times than our opponents. So we needed to basically capture these to make safe the, uh, the eastern side of the map for us. As you can see, we've now done. We've done that within the last week. And there are still ongoing battles going on. So you can see Darm battling Burn and Home up here in the north. And also battling here as well around Etten Moors. Meanwhile, however, because of the pressure that was being put on from uh, the, the Purple Kingdom in the north, they are allied to the other Purple Kingdom in the south, the uh, which is this here with Crow and Wolf, so the Wolf Kingdom. And they had pushed through, starting in this southern area. They kept, Once they'd captured all these keeps and uh, grown sufficiently in power, they then captured this pass here, which is Arganath, and moved north. They did have a little bit of a skirmish with, as you can see, with the Ones Kingdom. So they still own the Black Gate currently with Ones on the other side. They did have a bit of a skirmish with Ones, but they carried on progressing, capturing the Emin Wheel and also then moving into the Undeeps, which became a problem for us as we, at that point, did not have a centrally located 
Uh, we didn't have basically a pass here. And as we were busy with Mine and Darm, they seized the Undeeps and they also seized Southern Anduin Vale. So Crow was starting to take domination of the Dol Guldur area. I think we may have cleared this now, but you can see there's still a lot of tiles around here that we've only recently in the last couple of days started clearing out. But what we did is we had a skirmish here on this pass with Crow. I believe I did record some of this, so I'll put it in the background. So we did have to basically, while simultaneously trying to hold off Mine and Darm, this is at the point where we haven't captured these crossings, so Darm and Mine can freely progress back upon our area when they know that we're otherwise engaged. So we had to kind of balance having some people up north and then try and take this pass, uh, which, we then, which we successfully did, as you can see. And we're able to hold off Crow and, uh, well, the Wolf Kingdom, basically. The one benefit we did have is because we'd had because we been fighting Mine and Darm for so long, we had a pretty significant level advantage at this point. We probably had four or five levels on our opponents, which really shone through as we were able to take down multiple armies each for, the, for a lot of our players. Um, so that's kind of the downside of staying away from the fighting at the beginning is once you end up out leveled it's incredibly difficult to get a foothold back and so it proved here we pushed through we did manage to capture southern Anduin Vale and since then we've carried on pushing and in the last week or so we've kind of taken control of the central Dol Guldur area you'll see there's still a lot of battles and skirmishes going on around the place particularly southern Anduin Vale around this tunnel and we're starting to push across now into Lorien which both passes into Lorien have been occupied by Mine and Darm for the intention of entering that central ring area and fighting with us. Now, you know I haven't mentioned the Green Kingdom in this whole time, which I will touch upon now. So, originally when this service started, for quite a while, it did look like it was going to go a similar way to our prior season and was going to be a really, really tough server with everyone kind of engaging all against us as i believe uh, the the green kingdom so the cogs kingdom had previously played with i think it's the light purple at the bottom and so originally we were under the impression that all of these three kingdoms were working together both the south and the west which would become a problem as we would get overwhelmed the Ones Kingdom said they were happy to ally with us and work with us, so they uh, they did, and that's when they had that skirmish with Light Purple to try and take a little bit of the heat off us. Uh, but actually, eventually, the Green Kingdom agreed to work with us and ally with us, so that's what they've done. You'll see they've been skirmishing around here quite a lot with Mine and Darm as well, and that's really one of the things that turned the tide of the battle. When we were fighting around this central area, we were obviously getting, we were fighting in the central area and then also fighting in the north and split between two different areas fighting four fellowships was uh, pretty difficult as we were just getting completely outnumbered player wise. Um, we were managing to stalemate in most areas or make very little progress but we were never going to get to the point where we, uh, we were able to repel the enemy and take the passes until Legion's pressure uh, really told in this in the western area and they started progressing upon Mine and Darm. So they, they really helped us out there by taking some of the pressure off. You can see they're also fighting down here as well now with Wolf and Crow. So in the last few days, as we've driven uh, our opponents out of the central area, it looks like they're looking to turn around, basically, and fight and, and beat the Legion Kingdom, or Kohag Kingdom, so, of course, we're going to have to try and help them out, which is why we've since progressed into this, uh, into the, across the north, basically. Originally, we weren't intending on taking the western side of the map. We don't want to, you know, try and zero anyone or drive anyone um, away or kind of you know, ruin anyone's experience. But we do have to honour our allies who, of course, helped us. So we have been pushing across from the north to the west to try and aid our allied kingdoms and make sure they don't... Um, suffer for their help with us particularly at the minute their Ered Lewin uh, capital of course is actually pretty close to uh, some of the areas occupied by uh, by Darm so that's something we're going to look to try and assist with but yeah that's the map at the minute you can see there's a number of pings around you've got five and a half million here with Mine Legion and Darm you've got another 2.7 which has popped up in the last day with Cogs, Wolf and Crow and then the main big ping is Southern Anduin Vale, which is around a 14 million ping. But you can see there's a number here as things move around. I think primarily 
this will be, uh, you see we're pushing through now and starting to relocate and move a lot of these players as they uh, the ones that are located around Dolgulder so we can make these areas safe. So of course we will be looking to kind of capture these central regions to make this area safe and get everyone behind behind the passes before we look to make next moves alongside helping our allies where possible. So hopefully that's given a, a reasonably good description of how how the server has progressed. The politics definitely had a sway on this one as I think if it was everyone against us it would be vastly different at this point. Um, as of course we would just be completely outnumbered with the number of kingdoms coming at us. We stalemated around 400 but if the Green Kingdom had decided to pile into us as well I think we probably would have been overwhelmed. But um, equally I've seen three-way alliances try to work and they never do so... Um, yeah, it's, it's a reasonably fun and uh, relatively balanced server. Definitely mine and Dar made a lot of progress on us early server and then we've started pushing back recently and our strength is starting to show, I think. Um, so the balance is in our favour, clearly, but um, it's definitely not in such a way that we're just stampeding across the map and taking whatever we want whilst every one of our opponents quits. So it seems to be um, a reasonably strong server. I want to give a special shout as well to, to Mine and Darm, who of course we played against uh, last season as well. But they've really um, levelled up this season, I think. They've really shown what they're capable of. I'll talk through uh, a couple of the rankings while I'm here as well. So you can see personal production, we're still sat around the top. So we're in 16th at the moment. We haven't really been looking to... Uh, capture a lot of production so we're quite happy having you know 20 odd tiles worth of space but we've still got a good enough production to maintain 70 to to 80k of resource production in every resource which is enough for us to have you know full barracks a lot of the time uh, i don't think there's a lot to say on this first occupation we already spoke through this in the 24 hour video where we saw me capture the 200 which is one of the first but you will note that there's um a lot of darn players here uh, or a lot of our opponents, at least, who sit higher. So you've got Tharwin, Rov, and Commander Stark. Three very, very strong players who have done extremely well. And Kowalski and Byrne, as well, has been very strong for them. Uh, you see Bjorn here as well. Hanar, we've seen before. Um, but you basically you can see how strong some of the individuals from Mine and Darm are as they're sitting so high in these kind of rankings, which will really be seen when we then look at the merit rankings. With Darm and Mine fighting with us pretty much since the inception of the server, they are sitting very high on the merit table indeed. And Commander Stark has to be commended here as he is long away clear at the top of the merit table here around 800k higher than anyone else with them a pretty incredible early total of 3.4 million i've hit him a few times and it definitely it definitely does sting similar here with bjorn as well someone who i've hit a number of times very strong commanders similar with tharwin but here you can kind of see that the level of kind of um our opponents here in that you've got one two Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of the top ten in the merit at the moment is actually our opposition. So you can see how hard they're doing. Maybe they just need a couple of those who are a bit lower down the uh, merit to be able to step up and help them a little bit more. Because as individuals go, you can see they're right at the top and probably some of the strongest, um, strongest in the server. We towards the early start of the server, we were usually around the top ten. However, we've dropped off a little bit recently as. The same thing that's limited me from doing videos, basically a lot of uh, my evenings being taken up by work pressures or exhaustion from the working day um, has meant that I've got a little bit lower now and I've dropped down to 28th, but we've still got a very healthy 1.3 million. So shout out to all these guys on the leaderboard here who have been incredibly, incredibly strong. Um, but yeah, our opponents have done a great job there. So we are sat in 28th on the Merit. Fellowship production, we've kind of already shown a little bit, but our uh, Blue Kingdom are the top two, with Burn at the top and Home in second. And then we have Wolf in third and Crow in sixth from the Light Purple Kingdom, which is unsurprising, as of course they do have all of that southern region land, which currently is, is unthreatened, so uh, they're going to maintain a very high level of production. Then you have Darm in fourth, and Mine have slipped to ninth. Of course, their production is now starting to take a hit as when they lost the northeastern regions, they obviously lost a lot of large tiles there that they'd picked up as they'd come across. And then in the west as well, they're losing some tiles as they fight with Legion and, of course, as we push across from east to west. So they have dropped down 
to uh, fourth and ninth previously and for the majority of this server they have been kind of around the top five so that that's a kind of recent development ones is in fifth they've been relatively untroubled since those skir skirmishes with um with wolf and crow so uh they've just been allowed to kind of farm in peace and have put themselves up to fifth place and then we have legion and cogs who are in 7th and 8th and haven't really been able to develop their production as they have been kind of locked in that western region just fighting with uh, uh, with the Dark Purple Kingdom. So yeah, that's kind of where people sit as far as um, fellowship production goes. Commanders, of course, people can drop commanders off the leaderboards so uh, don't expect this to be an exhaustive list. But at the top four you can see are all owned by Commander Stark which is no surprise as he is top of the uh, merit leaderboard. Tharwin as well we've hit recently, who does also have level 50 and almost a full level 50 team, as well as a couple of other wolf players here. And you can see again, commander levels, you can see a lot of our opponents here are very high up on this leaderboard. So uh, when you hit those, they are definitely a challenge. But there's a few home players floating around in there. Us ourselves are sitting in 46th which we will show our team in a moment. We've slipped somewhat far behind. I think we were one of the first to 45, so it's a recent development we've slipped behind. But you'll see our team just here. So we have used the primary team I've spoken about before, which is Dane, King of Men, Gandalf the White, and Sauron. We did get an amazing pull uh, yesterday, actually, pulling a Berserker's Raiment. If anyone watched my Commander plan Plans video, which is available on my channel, I was talking through what I wanted to do with my Commander's uh, formation and also their uh, gear sets. And I had a Scale Mail with Warcry used previously as it matched my still my only Palantir, and I then changed the Blazing Tongue to Warcry as well. So I wanted this because it has the highest potential damage. Uh, and then getting the Berserker's Raiment was excellent as it gets me plus 6 initiative, more importantly plus 24 attack. So we sit lovely with that 2, 3, 8 attack, along with, of course, uh, yeah, lovely attack, Warcry set effect. And we're doing huge damage now with, with Dane, so... Uh, yeah, brilliant brilliant to see. And I'm going to look towards upgrading this helm, I think, to five-star as well, once I can break down this high elf helmet. But I'm just waiting to see how the meta shakes out. Aragorn, King of Men, 46. So he's approaching 47 as well. I did mention about getting him the Perseverance set, which I've done with the Axe of Khazad Doom and the Drums of barad -dur, But I've just left a Fortitude set for now on his middle two pieces of gear. Of course, the changes which came mid-season to set effects... Um, allowing almost everything to have a two-piece set meant this was possible and it's kind of left me re-evaluating whether I want or need to switch everything to Perseverance. I likely will do anyway, but you actually see that the four-piece set effect doesn't have a noticeably larger effect. So, um, you know, for example, like some have 5% and then 12%, so it more than doubles. That's not the case for Perseverance. Uh, we likely will still switch to Perseverance if we decide to continue using King of Men post-PBE update. Um, we'll wait and see on that one but uh, yeah so he's been doing very well as well output is in good damage Sauron has now switched to the full agility set as discussed in my video uh, not the best agility set ever as it's more kind of command and unit defense based not focused on pure speed which post PBE will definitely come in clutch as our huge defense um, will be amazing and the speed won't matter as much or initiative, I should say, won't matter as much when Sauron can't steal pre-battle buffs. And Gandalf the White's running the same set as before. Great focus, 2-5-3. Um, mainly just there for White Council. And again, low speed doesn't matter too much once the PBE update comes out. And we've also started blooding a second team as well, utilising these four commanders. Um, we're only using these really against... Uh, we're trying to target formations which are slight, somewhat under-leveled as, of course, we come up against one of these level 50 commanders, we're going to get zeroed easily. So uh, they've only just started getting worked out. And we've been levelling up a lot of our sweep teams and Gil as well for potential use once uh, the PBE is released. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to talk through. I don't think so. I think that's everything that there is to see. Um, again, we'll, I'll keep you up to date as how the server develops as we go along. That doubt there will be twists and turns still coming and plenty of battle pings to keep you guys all up to date with. If you guys have enjoyed this season update and want to see these more regularly, as I'm sure you do, please smash the like button and let me know in the comments uh, what you want to see from these in the future. And if you haven't already, please hit subscribe to see my updates as and when they come through. Anyway, with that, I've been HJW Gaming and I really hope to see you.
on the next one.